the way we're going to get into this is by, as we so often do, remembering where we've been before. Okay. Now, I know it's warm and your brains are starting to um, overheat a little bit, but I think you can help me remember what the derivative of log x is. It's a really simple function. Does anyone remember? 1 over x. Very good. Uh, quick note, do you remember, even though it's not that big a deal, but it's still true, there's actually a domain restriction on this 1 over x. Do you remember what it is? It, um, it's got to be x is greater than 0. Now, the reason why it's this is because the function you came from, this log x function, you remember what it looks like? Looks like this. There you go. There's your regular old log x. It only exists for x is greater than 0. If that's got a domain restriction, then its derivative also has a domain restriction. Does that make sense? Yep. Very good. Now, we then apply chain rule to this. So if you're doing log of not x, but a function of x, do you remember? It's a, it's a fraction just like this, but ever so slightly different. F dash x over f x. Very good. Just rolls off the tongue, right? f dash on f. Uh, and in the same way, this f of x, whatever it happens to be, has to be greater than 0, right? Same reason. There's a domain restriction on this thing, right? So I'm just going to chuck that in here. That was a bad curly brace. Let's see if we can make the second one better. That's much nicer. OK, so derivative. Derivative. Are you getting sick of me saying yet, every time you learn something about differentiation, you learn something about integration, right? So I'm going to take each of these and I'm going to turn them into an integration statement, okay? So we'll do it one at a time. Let's do the top one. The integral of 1 over x dx equals, well, where did we come from? log x. Yeah? But as we can see, this is indefinite. So there should be on the end plus c. Very good. OK, so we're starting to get the hang of this. OK? So that looks fine. I can have a look at this, and I can say something similar, namely the integral of f dash on f, this weird rational thing, uh, with respect to x. Sorry should be, well, where did I come from? What was the primitive? Here it is. Log of the f of x plus obligatory constant. Are you happy with that? So there's something interesting that happens. This is like 95% of everything you need to know under this heading for now. Can you please grab out your reference sheets? Pull them out, and I want you to find where you can see one of these results. Can you grab it for me? Now, I want you to search. I'm not going to even tell you what to look for, but it's something on the board. There's only one of them. There are four things on the board, and one of them is on the reference sheet. Have you found it? Which one of the things I've written on the board is on the reference sheet? It looks like it's this one, doesn't it? It looks ever so suspiciously like it's this one, except it's not. What's different? Underneath this, would you please write for me? The integral, this is what's on the reference sheet. The integral of f dash on f is in fact equal to the log of the absolute value of this. OK, now, this leads to a question. What's going on here? OK, we saw what was happening here. We made some sort of reverse statements, some integration statements off the back of these differentiation statements. Everything looked fine. Where is this coming from? I want you to have a look at the board and just take a guess. There's enough information on the board that you could sort of at least have a go at it. What do you see, Erica? Have a look over here. We have domain restrictions on these first two statements, as Erica has pointed out, right? Domain restriction, domain restriction. But there are no such domain restrictions here. So I haven't accounted for the fact that these things must be true. Okay? Now, what does that mean down here? There are a few different ways you can resolve this. Okay? First, let me tell you a bad way to resolve this. Okay? You could say x is supposed to be positive. It's supposed to be. 
I know how to make numbers positive if they aren't positive. I will put absolute value signs around them. That would turn, for example, negative five, it would turn that into five, right? Now, that's sort of true, right? it, it does become positive, but that's quite, it's pretty flimsy reasoning when you think about it, right? Because it's sort of, what, because you want it to be positive, you just make it positive? We've talked about this before, right? If I gave you the integral of something like x square root one minus x squared, okay? You'd have to do some kind of um, substitution for this guy, right? So you'd say, I'll choose that as my substitution, like so. In order to complete the substitution, you'd differentiate this, wouldn't you, right? So you might do something like this. Now you guys are at the point where you recognize, oh, I have a minus 2x here. I do not have a minus 2x up here. So I can fix that. I can make this a minus 2, provided I compensate on the outside, right? Do you see that? That would actually be okay. But you can't just say, I want it to be minus 2, so I'm just going to make it minus 2, any more than you can say, I want it to be positive, so I'll just make it positive. There's a more fundamental reason, a better explanation as to why. There are two good ones. I'm going to give you the first one. It's enough for you guys to get working. And I'll give you the second one, maybe later, depending on how much your brain's overheat, maybe a different day. Okay? Let's look at what this would be like without all the chain rule in it. Okay, it would be this one, but with some absolute values. So underneath here, if you've got the space, the integral of 1 over x dx equals, and instead of log of the function of x, our function of x in this case is just x. And as the reference sheet tells us, I slap my absolute value signs faithfully on. Okay. Now I think this one here, I'm going to put a box around it. This one here gives us a good reason to think about why there should be absolute value signs. Beside this, over here if you've got some space, can you draw for me a set of axes? Draw all four quadrants, we're going to need them. And onto this graph, what I would like you to do is put the 1 over x curve onto your set of axes. y equals 1 over x. Hmm. Okay, now, this thing here. We've, been, we, we've gotten far enough into calculus that we can sort of look at all of this stuff and more of it, most of it more or less makes sense, right? We're all just shuffling symbols around and everything is very symbolic. I want you to go all the way back to the start of this integration topic. What problem is integration designed to solve? It's an area problem, right? Now we know how to find areas on here. For instance, here's an area. Zoop. There's an area underneath there, right? So I could find what that area was if that was, say, 1 to 2. I could find out what that area was by putting in the correct values, right? I would form a definite integral using this. But what this tells you is, like, see the 1 over x function? It exists over here. Do you see that? It exists over here quite happily, whereas the log function does not, okay? But there are areas over here. I should be able to find what they are. Right? So see how we said I have to put a domain restriction because this guy doesn't exist everywhere this one does. So you restrict. Right? Down here, this guy exists in some places, like over here, where the integral, the primitive I should say, doesn't. Right? But we want it to exist over there. We want to be able to get sensible values out of negative values of x. So therefore, I need to put absolute value signs because, look, negative values of x totally exist for 1 over x, so I better be able to put suitable values into it, okay? That's not the best reason. I have a better reason, but it takes a bit more work, and frankly, you don't really need it to actually be able to do all of this. So I'm going to hit pause on that, and I'm going to let you have a bit of practice just using this, and then we'll see if we have the time and brain capacity to have a look at it, okay?